morning. I, I really don't smell enough estrogen in this room. I, I, I really think we need to do something about that. And also, did anybody get this Google swag bag for the speakers? Because I, I know, I just knew they were going to compensate us with, you know, Google Glass and, you know, Chromecast and, you know, the new wood phone. But I swear the stuff I got looked like the stuff that's in the um, bathroom, you know, the toothpaste. <laughs> I, anybody? No, really, anybody? I guess it's just me. Um, I was raised in South Central, so I'm going to give you guys just a little glimpse, you know, of, of, um, of my life, you know, what's happening there. Um, South Central is a place where it has you, it's easier to find a dialysis center than a supermarket that serves food that's not impregnated with GMOs. So, it was some old dead white guy once said, the land turns to gold in the hands of the wise. I'm here to say everything's connected, everything. The frogs, the trees, the butterflies, you, me, even that crazy looking guy over there. Um, everything. We all breathe the same air. We drink the same water. But yet, we all share different life experiences. Some people have never had the opportunity to experience life that wasn't di dictated to them by an unjust system. They live white life with limitations, within invisible boundaries, unable to see the full spectrum of their spirit due to the lack of exposure. Basically, I call these empty lots. If a plant needs sunshine or water and it doesn't get it, it ceases to exist. If a child has no access to healthy food or nourishing food, they cease to evolve. We have to change this. No matter, you can't, I don't care how much technology you throw at these kids, no amount of technology is going to ever fix that if they're hungry. <laughs> I don't care how many computers you give them. If they're hungry, it's, it's worthless. So technology is going to do nothing. These kids have no idea how their life is being deprived. They attend schools that are nothing less than incubators for the prison system the prison industrial complex. They're fed food from the agro industrial complex that will guarantee them membership to the medical industrial complex, and they will get a pill for the rest of their life. Why are we allowing, why are we sitting around allowing this to happen? We have the power to change that. Maybe that convenient food that they're eating, it's really not that convenient. Because sooner or later, they're going to pay. Sooner or later, we're all going to pay. Our inner cities and schools are under siege. They're being occupied, terrorized by cheap, fast food. Food is the problem, and food is the solution. I feel the school system needs to be demolished. Children are not supposed to be in classrooms all day. Most are tactile. They learn by doing, not by listening. I was one of those, I, was, I am one of those kids. <laughs> See, I'm dyslexic, and I'm an artist, which is, <laughs> that's a recipe for failure <laughs> in the education system as we know it today. I couldn't read, well, I, I couldn't read as well as, you know, most people. That made it real hard for me in school. There wasn't, but I found out there wasn't nothing wrong with me. It was the way they were teaching me with this spandex pants, one size fit all education system that we have. Like I said, we all have different life experiences. But just like 26.5 million other Americans, I live in a food desert. All right, well, let me change that. I live in a food prison, okay? Because that's basically what it amounts to. 
So what I, what I do, I grow food on the streets of South Central Los Angeles, which that made me a criminal. And um, what I wanted to do, I wanted my neighborhood to, I wanted people to see, I wanted people to realize you can grow your own food. Take your, your health is your responsibility. It's not your mama's, it's not your doctor's, it's not the chick down the street. Your health is your responsibility. So with this food <coughs> growing on my parkway, somebody, one of the neighbors complained. So I wound up, city came down on me and gave me a warrant. Does anybody know anything about what I do? Raise your hand. I want to see the three people in the room. <laughs> um, so with, so with, this, with this warrant, um, it was some beautiful things happened. So the moral of that story is embrace your haters because they make you famous. Fast forward. So the city council, they vote 15 to 0 to, um, to vote against, the, to let people plant on their parkways. This is a, this is a vision of my, this is a version of my, of my parkway. This is, a little, this is a little girl from down the street that's like the essence of life to me. I mean, she's just beautiful and she's like, where's this? What is this? Where's this come from? Who's your brother? Where's your brother? Where, who? And it was like, you know. And her dad's like, shh, shh, don't. I said, no, that's who she is. I mean, this girl's going to run a country, you know, at, at one point. That's why we need more estrogen in this room, dude. So, so and also, the city, now I got the city council behind me. I got the mayor behind me. They want me to partner with them to bring more green spaces to Los Angeles um, and community gardens. So back in February, I did this TED Talk, which was instrumental in spreading the, my gospel about global gardening. We now have children in Austin, Texas, all the way to India who are calling themselves gangster gardeners, you know, and letting their shovels be their weapons to change their lives, their communities. And that's what we want to happen. Some empty lots, they don't start out like that. Some are created. I was an empty lot. Most start off with everything they need to prosper, you know, good water, good soil, and a gardener to watch over it. The best thing you can do for an empty lot is have the gardener's shadow on it. I'm a gardener. Gardening is my graffiti. I grow my art. Just like a graffiti artist, paints a canvas, I use the soil as my canvas. And I, I give the plants, I cultivate the soil to give, it, to give the, the, um, the seed what it needs to grow. And it blossoms into something beautiful that can inspire. And what I found is, it took, it took Alice Waters Foundation, it took them $750,000 to figure out that if kids grow kale, kids eat kale. Why didn't they give me that damn money? <laughs> I mean, I'm serious, really? Plants want to live, just like, just like kids, but they adapt to their environment, just like kids want to live also. But if you place a kid in a dangerous, unhealthy environment, devoid of green spaces or affirming Stabilities, where, they, where, where all they see from birth is violence and despair. And then we have the, the magic happens. Then at every turn, they're assaulted by these savvy food companies who hire these brilliant marketing firms. They make up these wonderful campaigns that seduce them into eating dead, processed, unhealthy, unfood products that is delicious and addictive at the same time. How the hell do you expect these kids to go out and be 
something else besides ADD? How do you expect them to, to then you sit them in a room and you expect them to excel? It ain't gonna happen. That's why we have hypertension, type two diabetes, lack of opportunity. That's a disease where I'm from. I don't think so. Gardening is the gateway. Gardening is a metaphor for life. All of life happens in the garden. I've seen people prosper, pr perspectives change from being in the garden. I've seen my garden has become a tool for the transformation, a tool for the education, a tool for the emancipation of my neighborhood. I've seen the soil seduce men, women, and children alike. And this thing about nature, where we have this discord, where, oh, we're going to get in the car and we're going to go see nature. We're nature. Look in the mirror. We need to realize that we, are, we, we decompose just like soil. Nature is not something you get in the car and go, and go to see. There should be gardens. There should be gardens with schools in them, not schools with gardens in them. The lesson happens in the garden. All of life happens in the garden. So what we're doing with the Ron Finley Project, we're changing that. We, 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 we want to bring a bounty of art, love, education, and healthy food into these neighborhoods around the world. Where we're returning shipping containers and making them into places that have active, living gardens on site. I'm working with Alice Waters right now, to, and we're working on this diabolical plan to take over the world. UEP Newton once said, my fear was not of death itself, but of death without meaning. My fear is a life without meaning, a life without happiness, a life without art, a life where I'm not able to express my spirit. People need to be inspired to rise up, to stand up, to lift up, so they can live up to a, a higher calling. The same old white guy from earlier, he said, educate and inform the whole mass of people, for they are the sure reliance for the preservation of our liberty. His name just happened to be Thomas Jefferson. So, so, so let us inspire. So let's be the inspiration that lights the fire in their souls. My message is simple. Just plant some shit. I, I've run out of time, so I, I got to conclude this. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's time to be active, to leave your comfort zone, change the game, bring forth situations and solutions that, and systems that will flip the paradigm on its ass. Our country claims to be the greatest, the strongest, the most developed in the world. So let's make it this. Let's make this country what it claims to be. Let's make it the greatest. greatest. Let's not have one of the sickest developed nations on the planet. Let us not have babies dying in the street. Let us not raise our kids to go to prison. But to live engaging, inspiring lives. Let us stop missing out on brilliance, no matter what color it is, no matter where it comes from. We must give people a chance to blossom, to shine, to give back to Mother Earth. We, we are all connected. There are empty lots all around you. So ask yourself, how can, how can I fill this empty lot? How can I make it blossom? How can I help Ryan make this happen? This is my passion. This is, this is my mission. This is what I'm here for. I'm a catalyst for changing this planet, but I need help because this mother is heavy. <laughs> Peace.